The J10 Vigorous Dragon is one of the key chess pieces in the Far East. It is the backbone of the light, medium-weight, multi-role fighter power of the People's Liberation Army Air Force, shortly PLLAF. Still, controversies about this aircraft have continued unabated since its design phase. As the weapons detective, we are investigating the J-10, a rival that should not be underestimated. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The J-10, whose NATO reporting name is Firebird, is currently one of the most noteworthy fighters with its features and complicated history. It is classified as medium-weight combat aircraft, but the Vigorous Dragon is designed to replace the lightweight fighters of the PLLAF. From the beginning, the J-10 have a highly intriguing adventure. To better understand this aircraft, let's briefly look at the past. The events leading up to the creation of the J-10 began in the 1970s. The USA took the game to the next level in combat aircraft with the fourth generation. In the early 1980s, the USSR introduced the MiG-29 and Su-27 to catch its rival. This situation made the entire PLLAF inventory obsolete. By signing the 1982 US-China joint communique, Washington had limited arms sales to Taiwan. So, Taipei could not acquire the F-16 Fighting Falcon or F-20 Tiger Shark combat aircraft. Still, Ronald Reagan was not willing to leave Taiwan alone. This island state, which is constantly under the threat of a Chinese invasion, began to develop its own fourth-generation fighter with US technical support. These events forced China to have a modern jet fighter urgently. Fortunately for Beijing, the Western countries were eager to improve their relationships with China to balance the USSR. Even though the PLLAF had considered the direct acquisition of the F-16 or Mirage 2000, Later, it was deemed that the procurement of expensive fourth-generation aircraft was not economically and strategically a realistic option. An indigenous fourth-generation fighter development project with Western support was a more convenient solution. Three Chinese aviation companies began their work. It was the first time China allowed competition between the national aviation companies rather than allocating a project to one of them. Shenyang offered an F-16-like aircraft called J-13. Hongdu was working on a variable sweep wing fighter. Chandu's proposal, the J-9, was very similar to Saab 37. China chose to continue with the proven design of Chandu in 1984. Beijing approved the program in 1986, codenaming it Number 10 Project. Chandu was now working on a new fighter called J-10 based on the J-9. Different from its predecessor, the J-10 would have a fully movable canards and a fly-by-wire flight system. Still, developing a fourth-generation fighter was a challenge for the Chinese aviation industry. Nearly 60% of the J-10 required new technology and parts. The approach to further develop the reverse-engineered copy of a fighter previously used by the Chinese aviation industry would not be enough in this project. It was almost impossible without the technical assistance from abroad. Thanks to the Western support, Chengdu began to use digital design, modeling and testing, including computer-aided design and computational fluid dynamics techniques. These cooperation leveled up the Chinese aviation industry. Also, through this program, China adopted the modern project management structure of the West. Before, a Chinese supplier company had been contacting only the managing agency. In many cases, this structure caused failure answering end-user needs. Chengdu was now responsible directly to the customer. The new project management model allowed the PLLAF to communicate its requirements and ensure that they were met. But the 1989 Tiananmen Square incident broke the relations with the USA and the European countries. Initially, this situation did not bother Beijing. After all, the massive population, vast geography and the arsenal of considerable mass destruction weapons provided enough deterrence for a possible attacker. Also, the PLLAF had over 5,000 combat aircraft. Even if these aircraft were outdated, it was still an intimidating number. Beijing was feeling secure, so the project slowed down. But after the 1991 Gulf War, China realized that thousands of J-5s, j 6 and J-7s could not protect the country. The PLLAF urgently needed new fighters. Fortunately, the USSR collapsed. 
there was no more Soviet invasion threat. Also, the new Russian Federation needed money, and it was open to cooperation. So, the Russian engineers, who had previously worked on the MiG-144 project, began to support the Chinese J-10 program. Besides, some sources claim that Pakistan gave an F-16 to China, and Chandu found an opportunity to study the F-16's fly-by-wire system, which was a basis for the Chinese effort in this area. Also, many sources assert that Israel, which had developed the LAVI, provided an essential help. We will come back to this claim in our analysis section. The first prototype of the J-10 made its first flight on March 23, 1998. Some sources claim that a critical problem with fly-by-wire caused the crash of the second prototype in 1999. However, the Chinese have refused this incident. The PLLAF received the first J-10s in 2003 for training and trial purposes. The design was finalized in 2004 and the aircraft became operational in 2006. The airframe of the J-10 is produced of metal alloys and composite materials. The first production variant, J-10A, has a rectangular air intake ramp and a splitter plate. The B and C models have diverterless intakes that eliminate all moving parts. This design makes them far less complex and more reliable than earlier diverter plate inlets. The removal of moving parts also reduces the weight of the aircraft. The KLJ-3 Pulse Doppler radar of the A variant can track 10 targets. It can simultaneously send semi-active radar homing missiles on two of them or active radar homing missiles on four of them. The J-10A has a fixed refueling probe installed halfway up the forward port side of the fuselage and just forward of the pilot. The A variant used in the Chinese Navy is called J-10AH. The tandem-seated J-10S is the trainer variant of the J-10A. This model also trains the pilot of the Bs and Cs. Its Chinese Navy variant is called J-10SH. Different from the A variant, the J-10B has a larger nose radar, which houses a passive electronic scanning array radar besides the diverterless intake. Also, its ventral fins are expanded and the aircraft is equipped with an optical infrared sensor installed in front of the cockpit windshield, whose range is about 185 km. But due to the increased weight and installation of the diverterless intake, the maximum speed of the J-10B decreases to Mach 1.8. While the J-10A's upper tip of the vertical stabilizer is cut horizontally, the J-10B has a triangle-shaped vertical stabilizer. Due to the installation of the optical infrared sensor, the position of the refueling probe is changed. J-10B TVC with the 142 kN WS-10B thrust vectoring control engine is a prototype technology demonstrator aircraft based on the J-10B. The latest C variant of the J-10 has a modified engine nozzle for stealth and thrust vectoring. It is equipped with the WS-10B engine. The aircraft has an imaging infrared sensor, which is more advanced than those used on the B variant. The J-10C can launch the PL-15 air-to-air -air missiles, which have an operational range of 200 to 300 km. It is a significant enhancement. The previous A and B variants, which have no PL-15 capability, can carry the PL-12s as the longest-range air-to-air missiles, whose operational range is 70 to 100 km. The export version of the J-10C is J-10CE. Its sole current user, the Pakistan Air Force, designates this variant as J-10CP. Some open sources on the internet share the J-10D variant with a stealthier design and conformal fuel tanks. But there is no officially confirmed information about this model. It is claimed that the J-10 structure is sensible against the water, which causes parts to rust. Naturally, it raised questions about the aircraft's abilities in wet weather. Yet, after this claim, the People's Liberation Army Naval Air Force released a video of the J-10 in which a J-10 took off on a rainy day to perform a mission. China and Pakistan are the current users of the J-10. The J-10A has a length of 15.49 meters, a wingspan of 9.75 meters, and a height of 5.43 meters. Its wing area is 39 square meters. The aircraft's empty weight is about 9,750 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight is about 19,300 kilograms. One 137 kN NPO Saturn AL31FN Series 3 turbofan engine provides a top speed of Mach 2.2. It can climb an altitude of nearly 18,000 meters, in other words, 59,000 feet. The aircraft's range is 1,850 kilometers. The J-10's combat radius is 550 kilometers. It has one 23mm Gusha 23 gun, 
and 11 hard points with a capacity of 6 tons ordnance. The J10 can carry the PL8, PL9, PL10, PL11, PL12, R73 and R77 air-to-air -air missiles, YJ9, YJ91 air-to-surface missiles, YJ8K, Ha-31A anti-ship missiles, as well as different types of bombs and rocket pods. In 2016 and 2017, the Chinese J-10s intercepted the US EP-3 Eland aircraft. These events have naturally reminded the Hainan Island incident. But different from 2001, no air collision occurred. Other than these, nothing special has occurred yet that can give us clues about the aircraft's true worth. Before we can move on to our analysis, we should briefly look at the claims that suggest J-10 is a copy of the Lavi. At first sight, these two aircraft have similar appearances. But we should also admit that Eurofighter Typhoon and even Rafale have similar designs. As we tried to explain in our Eurofighter Typhoon video, after the Kfir and Wiggins success, the layout of the tailless Delta Wing with canards became popular. China followed the same path as Israel and the European countries. Since the J-9 program, Chengdu had already worked on a similar aircraft. So far, China and Israel have refused the claims. If we closely look at the J-10 and Lavi, we can find as many differences as the similarities. The most likely scenario is that China may have received technical assistance from Israel instead of directly copying Lavi. Some claim that the J-10 is just a copy and belittle it. Let's say that this claim is correct. Is being a copy enough to misprice the J-10? The Avia S-199 was an inferior copy of the Messerschmitt Bf-109, but its contribution to the foundation of Israel was essential. Of course, all sides of a rivalry believe that they are better than the other. It is natural because no soldier wants to go to war with inferior weapons, bad tactics and inadequate training. But this belief may cause dangerous blindness. Let's look at some examples of this blindness. The US Air Force had complete confidence in the face of the North Vietnamese pilots and the MiGs. Also, the great faith of the Russians in their own power has hit the wall in Ukraine today. Before the 1967 Six-Day War, the Israelis did not underestimate the Arabs. They prepared well for the war. But six years later, Israel belittled its enemies, which almost led to its extinction. Therefore, the wisest way is to avoid underestimating the opponent. The J-10 is not a marvel of the world's aviation industry, but it is a considerably capable fighter. It can launch the standoff air-to-surface precision munitions. The C variant can use the PL-15s for long-range air-to-air engagement. It is a fearsome rival in a dogfight. We can assert that the J-10C is the Chinese version of the cleverly designed AS-39 Gripen. Over 500 vigorous dragons can have a significant impact in a possible war. Still, the Chinese pilot training levels and the efficiency of the air combat tactics are debatable. But the same things were once said to North Vietnamese too. On paper, the J-10 isn't a bad fighter at all, and the PLAF has plenty of them. Without seeing the J-10 in a war, what is said about this aircraft is bound to remain a speculation. But we should underline once again that it is not wise to underestimate the rival. Thanks for watching our video, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.